what's going on everybody what's going on welcome to another lion's den with seth y'all my name is seth and i am glad to see y'all here happy 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 sunday yes like larry said y'all happy sunday listen um this is a great time okay the reason why i say this is a great time is because us on the lion's den we try to stimulate thought action leadership growth and development and sometimes we have conversations that does just that so i want to encourage you all if you haven't done so already smash the share button okay hit the share button because you never know who may need this and also let us know where you are right now i don't care where you are where you are yeah type it in hey this is where i'm at hashtag i'm in alabama boom what's going on what's going on no matter what it is or where where you are let us know that you're in the field and of course i could not do this without my fellas what's going on larry how you feeling bro hey 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 man i'm chilling man sunday i'm looking out my window now as i talk to you and it's looking lovely out here i'm kind of enjoying this spring weather right now it's about time, man. It seemed like Mother Nature had a little hissy fit, like she didn't know what she wanted to do. You dig what I'm saying? I ain't no. Shout out to, uh, to Maryland. But you know what I'm saying? What's going on? Yeah, but it hopefully it stays a little bit more consistent. That's just all That's all I ask for is I'm happy with the 70, 75 degree weather. I can take that. You can take that. I feel you. I feel you. Other than that, your weekend is good, bro. Good, bro. I went to the Cardinals game on Friday, you know, represented, had a good time. You know, it's a beautiful stadium. You should go, by the way, if you haven't. I'm telling you right now. Go check them out. <laughs> and then Saturday, man, I didn't really do a whole lot. I volunteered at the commissary raising money for the uh, senior enlisted induction ceremony coming up for those newly selected master sergeants. Mm-hmm. And I uh, just did some chores around the house, man. Just relax. Good, do my good. Part. You know, like, right, it don't sound like you, you did too much chillaxing, you know what I'm saying? But no, that's uh, dope. Man. That's dope. But look, I, hey, we see uh, Brooklyn is in the house. Love that. You know what I'm talking about? Yo, what's going on, Will? How you feeling? What's going on, big dog? All right. How's hey, your man. weekend? Hey, I'm feeling like Herm up in the car, man. This, this show dedicated to my man, Herm, who's been notorious <laughs> for doing the show from the whip. But no, man, yeah. everything all good, brother. Mom's crib. Got, got, got the opportunity to go out to Home Depot with moms. And, you know, as you know, my mom, she loves these flowers. Mm-hmm. I feel like a slave in a new millennium right now today, but it's all worth it. See, oh, goodness gracious. Oh, man. Hey, well, listen, <laughs> yo, yo, and by the way, yes, um, Herm is not going to be on today. He had to take care of some um, some business, but shout out to him. Y'all Y'all give him and his... Uh, his comrades, you know, put them in your, in your thoughts, right? But again, make sure you're sharing this, sharing this, y'all. We appreciate y'all. But listen, this show, the title alone, okay? The title alone, look at him. There you go. Listen, the title alone should um, get you to start thinking about uh, what this show is going to be about. And you don't know, you don't know. You, hey, you, you might learn something. So, but anyway, before we go into the actual show, I want to introduce our guest, okay? Now, her name is uh, Chandrika D. Fee, okay? I believe I said Fee or Faye. Y'all let her fix that. And I do apologize <laughs> if I jack that on up. Anyway, she's an ordained reverend, and she's an outdoor enthusiast and triathlete, which is super dope, and a wellness coach uh, by profession, and a partner with uh, W Brand Publishing. And she actually released her debut book, Lord, I Don't Want to Die a Christian. Y'all, I'm not going to go too deep into this. I want her to tell her own story. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all give it up for Miss Chandrika. There you go. How you feeling, ma'am? I am grateful. Thank you. And yes, you said it correctly the first time. See. Oh, see that? Yeah. Look at that. Hey, yeah. hey, what, hey, what did it say? Look at God. Look at God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 so look, welcome, welcome to the den. Just tell our audience a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Well, you you did well to do so. Um, I'll add, uh, I have a degree in biblical studies. Um, Ray, I was born into a Christian family, born into to a Pentecostal Church of God in Christ, uh, Pentecost, uh, a Christian family. Um, I say I was born a Christian. Um, I wasn't introduced to it. Yeah, I was born to Christian parents. Um, and I was born just as much a Christian as I was born black. And so um, I only knew Christianity and I aimed and pursued the collar 
Um, and so I, I did. I got my degree in biblical studies. I was a licensed minister uh, before moving from Oklahoma to Georgia. Um, and then from Georgia, I moved to China, taught and lived in China for two years. Um, I was there to change China. I was there mm -hmm. to convert uh, Chinese um, college students and thereby convert their families, um, and thereby convert generations. So I was there to change China. Listen. And, uh, China. A whole Listen. country of billions. Are, are you listening to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, she said, hey, I was there to change China, right? To, to get them on code. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. I was there to change a nation, honey, and a nation changed me. I know. Right on, right on. So that's actually a good transition because that's where I wanted to start with you today. I want to talk about how China changed you in contrast to you changing China. Can you get into how what led up to you writing this book? Well, you know, China is a communist country. And so we there were certain ways we had to carry ourselves. We couldn't. There was so much about Christianity um, that that we couldn't. Let me say there's so much about Western Christianity that we could not um, express over there and, and be safe. Um, mm. You know, uh, we couldn't express ourselves um, the way we do in Western culture and uh, stay over there, you know, to, you know, perhaps even get invited back. So it was important to uh, learn the culture, learn how to be what I believed um, without wearing Christianity per se. I couldn't park in the, in the minister's parking space and I, I couldn't go around wearing a collar and something I used to do all the time before going to China, I carried my Bible everywhere I went and it was always visible. Um, and so uh, I just was so committed to uh, being known as a Christian. Um, and I couldn't do that there, not instead. So that kind of, that began my journey. Who was I without all of what I can do over here? Mm -hmm. I, who was I without church membership? Who was I without the, the role and the title of being a worship leader? Who was I without the role and the title of being outreach minister, the role and the title of praise and worship leader? None of that stuff existed over there. Who was I without the title of Christian? Who was I without saying um, I go to so-and-so church? I'm a member and my apostle is and my bishop is. Who was I without all of those things? Goodness. Um, God. Hold on. Listen, yeah, you yeah. ain't know. I ain't know. I ain't know. I didn't either. Hey, but I'm glad. Cheers, right on. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. But go ahead. Not you. <laughs> Not you. I love it. <laughs> but no, but no, seriously, I think that is super, super dope. That is dope. That's that. That was the beginning of my journey. When I went over there, I I was so sold to something so simple. I was sold to the crucifix I wore around my neck. I got a jacket made before I left, not to uh, wear to China, but I was just continuously showing what I believed. So I had a jacket made and on the back of it, it said, God's got your back. I wore that. I took that with me to China, but it was attracting the wrong attention. Um, the Chinese government assumes that because you come from Western culture, you're a Christian. And so, you know, I guess they somehow um, measure your your level of devotion, if you will. And I was showing it. You know, I had my necklace on and it was in my ears and on my clothes. And so the police followed me to the grocery store. They followed me to or or check my trash can and they they um, tapped my phone. They checked my emails. And so I, who, if, if I was going to stay there, I had to figure out how to be what I believed without all of the things that, um, the symbolism that showed what I believed. Wow, that's a mouthful. 
Um, that's a challenging situation to be in. Um, what's going on, Miss Lady? I'm so glad that you you here with us to chop it up and just kind of educate us on some things that we might not be familiar with. But I want to know from your experiences in China, did that have anything to do with some of the information and content that went into your book? Was that influential in any way? Of course, if that was the beginning, you know, going to China, being away from, from, you know, the the system that kept me believing what I had been taught. Uh, it it was the beginning. I, there was no Wednesday night Bible studies. <laughs> there was no conferences to go to. There were no Sunday morning services to be a part of. So the beginning of my journey is is of, of this transformation. And a lot of what I wrote is it started in China. I call it my Damascus road. You know, Paul, the apostle Paul, who wrote a lot of the New Testament, this, as, as he shared the story in, in some of his writings, he's on his way to do what Jewish people did. He was going, well, I wouldn't say Jewish people did, but what he believed he was to do as a Jew um, was to kill Christians. And he's on his way to 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 uh, to change a nation. And um, he's knocked off of his beast. Um, and he's on he's on his way to Damascus and he's knocked off his beast. And, and his life has changed from that moment. You know, China was my Damascus road. It was it was the beginning of of my evolution. So. Yes, and thank you for that. And shout out to this question right here. This is a very, very good question. So what part, so, so what part of Christianity do you not believe today? Oh, so that's a broad question. I think the biggest, the, the answer I can give, uh, the biggest, I guess the most general answer I can give is I don't believe the part of Christianity that does not allow for curiosity. Mm. I don't believe so wherever you wherever you want to put that in Christianity, I don't believe in the part of Christianity that doesn't allow for the use of one's intellect. You know, I'm glad you said that because um, there was times in my life when I would ask certain questions. Right. right. And, and Larry alluded to this earlier on. But see, I don't know if Larry had this. People be wanting to fight you. Listen, I told you. Look, it said it, so that settles it. It's in right. the Bible, doggone it. Don't ask right. no more questions. So it's right. like I'm sitting there like, okay, so you want me to believe that A, B, C, and D, you get what I mean? Just willful, believe, ignorant, right? But they say, well, you really don't believe. No, I don't because it's not right. making sense to me, right. But then, right? But see, but then they get offended when it don't make sense. I'm asking you to talk to me because I want to learn. You right. get what I mean? Right. You, I, that's the part of Christianity I don't I don't believe in. Uh, the part of Christianity I don't believe in is is that of of like I said, not being able to use one's intellect. Uh, um, Jesus um, is it is written of him to have said, uh, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength." And so, so, and that scripture goes on to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so I just don't, I don't know. Um, I don't, I have never experienced Christianity or known of Christianity to allow uh, for the use of, of into intellectual um, expression. Mm. See. Okay. Okay. So I want to transition from when you left China and you came back to the, to the United States. And what sparked you to write this book? And with the title of the book, you already knew it was going to catch some people and and pretty much bring them, with you know bring them in. It's like what 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 what's this title? So I want to know what went into you actually journaling your time over in China, putting it in a book, and getting the response that you got. Because I don't know if you understand the real response that you got from people that felt just like you. Like I'm not questioning God. I'm asking God questions. I like that phrase right. you call. And you speak and elaborate on that part. Um, the inspiration behind the title, it, it really sincerely was a prayer. Um, I was living in two realities. 
I had come back from China and I was back permanently. I was there two years and I was going back to church as I knew it. Um, I'm sure with the intention on uh, going back into ministry, but I was having to take my time because I was struggling with culture shock. And so, um, but I was slowly going back to church, black church. And then on top of that black Pentecostal church, black Pentecostal church is, is another kind of expressive, charismatic, um, uh, people, people group. And so, um, I was, I was going back as a member or not as a member, but just, um, as a, just going back because it's what I knew to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was struggling with some of the things I was hearing. I, I lived in China for two years and hadn't heard the devil. I lived in China two years and no one told me to or reminded me to pay my tithes. I lived in China two years and no one knocked on my door and said it was first Sunday. It was time. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I'm not being funny. I'm so serious. And That's so that those funny. things, those those traditions, or as Carlton Pearson likes to say, traditions. Um, those were absent in my life for two years and now it's back, it's present and it's, I'm struggling with, with culture shock. I'm struggling with the language that is being used. I haven't heard it for so long and wow. I have expanded as a person. I have expanded spiritually um, and I'm trying to fit it in the same way of thinking that I left. Mm. So that is the reality I'm experiencing. And then Barack Obama is the president. And I'm also being made aware of white evangelical influences uh, airing out their grievances about having a black president. What? It's, yes. Um, and I'm, and I'm talking about the major influences in, oh. in, in uh, white Christianity, which is normally referred to as evangelical. And so, um, so I was struggling with, I'm back in this reality. You know, it wasn't something I was dealing with in China. I'm back in this reality. And I remember watching, um, I was watching CNN where they showed a pastor uh, inviting his grandson up to the pulpit to sing a racist song about having a black president. Oh my God. And I got so frustrated. I turned the TV off. Um, I stood to start cleaning my apartment. I walked over to my front door, pick up some shoes. And when I stood up, I exhaled, Lord, I don't want to die a Christian. Mm. So oh, it was, okay. I, didn't, I didn't sit down to write a book. It was an exhale. It really was a prayer. And the next thing I heard was that's a book. And then the next step I took, I saw I was not planning on writing a book. It was not something I ever planned on doing. And so um, I appreciated the idea. I pressed into it um, uh, uh, with prayer and I asked God, well, what am I supposed to write? And I believe I heard you've already started writing it. Mm. And so what it was is I was I was while I was there in, in China for two years, I was evolving and having these experiences and I would email my family and friends, but I saved them. So the front part of my book is is those journal entries. And then um, there are PSs to those entries, because when it's time to start writing the book, I'm realizing as I'm reading these journal entries, I am now different. So the PS is me looking back at myself going, oh, I wish I had done something different. Oh, this is so funny. I don't believe this anymore. You know, I talk about cursing. You know, and how, you know, at one point I thought that wasn't reflective of God. Now I'm thinking it's not that big of a deal. God is not mad or, you know, afraid of me cussing. And so, but I start off kind of very light and then it gets heavier and heavier as we get to the end of the book. Mm. Well, look, hold on. Before I give it to Will, ladies and gentlemen, again, the book that she's talking about is Lord, I Don't Want to Die a Christian. And this is what we're going to do for y'all. Okay. This is a code. This is a giveaway code. All right. We're going to be giving away one of these books. All you have to do is put in the chat hashtag lions. 
Mm -hmm. Hashtag Lions. Okay. So make sure you stick around so you can get in on this giveaway so you could be a winner. You understand to dive on deep into this. You dig? And I'm going to do this again so y'all can remember. Go ahead, Will. Uh, Ma'am, I I commend you on you sharing some of these experiences that you have. And and you, you bring up a really good point about how you were treated in China versus the United States. How do you in the U.S. deal with people, actually bad people that hide behind religion? How do you deal with individuals like that? Because you see them all the time. We're not supposed to judge people, but they judging everybody. They shoes, they dress, they hats. How do you personally deal with people and how can you teach others a better way to deal with people like that? I think I think there's no better way to to teach someone but by doing. Um, you know, doing and being an example of. Yeah, I have to I have to be careful because if I believe in God, I believe we all belong to him. Him, it, she, her, them, whatever. You know, and, and so I have to my job still is to to love people the after reading my bible uh the second year in china i read my bible from genesis to revelation i spent two and a half months doing that um i was i closed the bible um i closed the book very emotional i was angry i was uh, happy that i finished um i was sad i was so many different things mostly angry and so a couple of things happened. One of them being, I asked God, now what? And the answer I believe I heard was, can you just love me and love people? And so my job still is to love those who hide behind religion. Mm. And my other, and it's easy to do that when it was once me. So me carrying my Bible everywhere I went was me hiding. Me wearing the crucifix I wore was me hiding behind religion. Me uh, as a member of a church, now this is my story, was me hiding behind religion. And, and so what was I hiding? I was hiding that I lacked identity. I was mm-hmm. hiding that I did not know who I was, but I looked like I knew who I was. Doggone it. Hold on. Where is that? You know, you know, I told y'all I was going to get a bomb, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't do it. I'm going to get it. Okay, please. You need to hurry up and get it. I'm going to hurry up and get it. But you know what? And I'm going to be real quick with this, too, because it seems as though when you get outside the frame, you can see the big picture. Mm-hmm. But you had to get outside the frame to I see had to. it. Yeah. You dig? So I, I, yeah. kudos. Kudos to you. All right, big, uh, big Larry. So here's the question, man. All right, Sharita Shelby asked this question. Are you saying with a more diverse experience, it expanded your religious views, or are you saying you no longer have Christian views? Mm, Good question. I'm saying that my view and perspective of God and people will no longer be limited by religion. My religion or the religion I was uh, reared up in is Christianity. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to another religion either. I think that all religions are a reflection of their questions. Yes. I want to repeat that. All religions, I think, are just a reflection of their questions. Hold on one minute. Boom. (laughs) I'm I'm it. Right on. But go ahead. So, So the thing is, is where am I going? This, that religion has questions and this religion, got, we all have questions. And so I don't want my experience of God and life. I write, I think I write this, but I'm saying it. Christianity uh, uh, limits my experience of God. I think God is bigger than what Christianity has to offer. I think God is bigger than what Judaism has to offer. God is bigger than what Hinduism has to offer. God is bigger than what uh, Muslims have to offer. All of these religions are just a reflection of their questions, not a reflection of their answers, a reflection of their questions. You know, uh, so there's nothing wrong with curiosity either. Let's just put that out there. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. 
right. it's, it's nothing wrong with it. And the unfortunate part is, is that when individual, when you have those questions and you say you disagree, that's when people say, you know, you're an atheist because you don't believe in God. No, what? No, that's not true. Just it's just, I don't believe in the way you think. You think. You know yes. what I'm saying? Just because right. I don't believe in the way you think don't mean I'm going on a slippy slide straight to hell. What are you doing? You get right. what I'm saying? And then that's right. your thought that right. you're imposing on me. So my question is for you, how do you know when there are certain individuals that you cannot have those transparent conversations with? And what, what do you do when it's time for you to just Stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> just that simple. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's I don't I don't have another answer. I just stop talking. You can discern when there's not a willingness to have a conversation. Just just stop talking. And then, you know, at some some and, and then there are some times, though, where, you know, some wisdom I have or, or is downloaded to me will shift the conversation you know it'll it'll sh- i don't want to say shut it down but definitely shift the conversation mm-hmm. you know the th- this is what i one of the things i write about um the word theology it means the study of god and then i also write christianity studies studies of god so if you study the bible you're studying their study of god because the Bible did not exist when they were living. So the only thing they had to do was press into this idea of God and they did it without confirmation. So when you come to me with scripture, I'm already done. I'm already shutting it down because that's not your study. So when I ask you a question, I'm looking for your study, your experience. Not what John said, not what Paul wrote, not what David said, not what Moses went through, not Jeremiah said, the book of Jeremiah and this scripture and that scripture. What is your experience? And when you start asking other people what their experience is and they don't have one, then what are we talking about then? And, and, and it's feared, right? Because it's also regurgitation of information yes. that they know, but yes. they lack the wisdom of being able to see how it has been implemented in their own life. If they have been open enough to experience that for themselves. I think the, I think the, ah. wisdom, the wisdom that is lacking is not that the, that the scripture they're reading being implemented in their life. It, the wisdom that is lacked is that it was never for you to implement that scripture in your life. Damn. It was always for you to have your own experience. Damn. What if they did not write? There are people who had experiences of God that didn't write. That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here, hold and, that and thought. That's still, and that's still happening today. Everybody's yeah, yeah. not writing down their experience of God or people or life. Okay. Hold that. Hold that. Ladies and gentlemen, look here. We got to take a break. OK, <laughs> because hey, we, we, we you almost need to. OK, <laughs> but don't forget, if you do want the book, if you want a copy of the book, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure that you put in the chat. Hashtag lions. Hashtag oh, lions. Y'all, this is an outstanding show. And I mean, this is really an opportunity for you to ask yourself questions. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, we're not here to change your mind on anything. Like, hey, you silly if you go into church 50 times a day. That's your business. You get what I'm saying? But experience God yourself. With that being said, y'all, make sure you hit the share button and you letting everybody know that you're in the best place in the world here in the lion's den. And we will be right back. Monique Slater is a top negotiating award-winning real estate agent in San Antonio, Texas. Her focus is on educating and empowering individuals on building general wealth through home ownership while providing exponential service with integrity and excellence. Although her heart is for serving first-time homeowners and the military community, her clientele ranges from $100,000 to $2.5 million. Monique has developed an awesome team that can get anyone into a home and has sold homes in less than six hours. After servicing the Air Force for over 28 years, Retired Chief Slater has a massive network so she can connect you with an awesome agent anywhere in the U.S. And if you're in San Antonio or relocating there, 
Give Monique a call first to help you find your dream home. Give Monique a call at 210-237-7268. One thing we can cherish during these times is family dinners. Think about it. The nice, succulent, southern fried chicken, baked beans cooked to perfection, creamy macaroni and cheese, cornbread. You get the point. Come check out Kevlar's Grill, where all the meals are cooked with perfection, professionalism, and love. Located outside the Scott Air Force Base back gate inside the VFW is where you can find them. Also, they have military discount for all of our serving members. Give them a call. Their number is 618-416-5700. And that's inside Scott VFW, post 4183. And they also have Grubhub. Call them now and tell them that the Lions Den sent you. All right, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to the Lion's Den. Hopefully you took some time to hit the share button, y'all, and make sure you go to the Lion's Pride uh, website so you can give a great reviews. Let us know how we doing. You know what I'm saying? Let us know if you're picking up what we're putting down. The website is the Lion's Pride 21.com. And right before the break, I said, make sure you put into the chat. If you want this book, make sure you put into the chat hashtag lions okay hashtag lions and and if you just need a reminder the number one team in the nfl right on right on and ladies and gentlemen we're getting ready hey i don't care i, I think i see larry in the back and everybody rolling their head who cares you understand nevertheless we're back with the lions then y'all hey larry man what you think about the show thus far man Hey man, you number one in draft picks. That's about it. Don't try to skip over that. Hold on, hold <laughs> but, on. I think something wrong with your connection. <laughs> I love the show though. I love you know I am a gamer for transparent, deep conversations, mm -hmm. especially when we talk about religion because that's always iffy. You know, it's like politics and race and all those topics. But I love it. Yeah. I think it's open, and I think everybody is pretty much receptive to it. It's not like we're challenging it. We're just saying, hey, have you ever thought about this? That's it. That's it. Well, what you think, man? Man, anytime you can have somebody to come on to keep it 100, especially talking about religion, it's always going to be a great conversation, especially in this circle. Mm -hmm. And we're going we to bring it the second half of the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And look, shout out to everybody that's giving y'all comments, y'all. Hey, and they're just coming through. So we do appreciate good that. And, yeah. and yes, very, very good questions. Very good questions and good comments, y'all. We do appreciate that. And so this is going to be the one of the first questions, right, uh, Chandrika, I uh, would like her to touch on. What is your belief on sin? Okay. Is it something that you get from the Bible or do we decide for ourselves what uh what the quote unquote sins are ladies and gentlemen y'all give it back up for miss chandrika there you go so what's your thoughts on sin like who does that who made it up well, I mean, that's my fault my first of all he just said it was made up i didn't say that Yes, don't put it on her, right? <laughs> I'll take that. But go ahead. What do you think? So so listen, the word sin, um, it shows up. The first time the word sin shows up is in Genesis um, when uh, Cain and Abel um, are offering um, their sacrifice to God. And um, one brother is is upset with the other based on his thought that God is not pleased with his offering. And so God says, um, according to the narrative, God says, uh, sin lieth at the door. Um, the word sin means to offend. It means offense. We were taught that Adam and Eve sinned. When they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Moses does not write that Adam and Eve sinned. Moses does not write um, the or use the word sin as it relates to their quote unquote disobedience. Mm -hmm. So so I kind of wanted to answer the question first from a technical standpoint or. Mm -hmm. As, as people would say, a theological standpoint. I hate using that word. Um, but 
the, just be mindful that the word sin is not used. First of all, the means offense to offend, but it is not used as it relates to Adam and Eve eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So people, uh, it's been taught that the reason Adam and Eve were put out of the garden is because they sinned against God. So I asked the question when realizing when the word sin was used, who was offended by Adam and Eve? Because the word offended is not used when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So one of the ways I answer the question is by asking a question. Who was offended? Mm. What if God was not offended by what Adam and Eve did? What if being offended is a choice? Message. Hold on. There it is. <laughs> what if? Because that's the thing. You know, you said something that made a lot of sense. We determine what offends us. Yes. We determine. You cannot determine what offends me because of who I am. I said, let me stop. Go ahead, Will. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to finish, if y'all don't mind, though, I want to yes, yes. finish, yes. I wanna finish that, that my answer. So that is the technical answer I have. Okay. I kind of want to put the whole idea to, um, to bed, though, by offering Moses the book of Genesis is which which mentions sin first. The book of Genesis, and let me go further to say that the most popular Bible sold today is the King James Version of the Bible. Most of us who uh, were raised in church were raised listening to, reading, or hearing that Bible, hearing from that Bible, okay? So in that Bible, the first book is Genesis, in the book of Genesis, the first time the word sin is used is in the story of Cain and Abel. Cain is in this story. Abel is in this story. Adam is in this story. Eve is in this story. The person who wrote the book is not in the story. In other words, the person who is writing the story of Adam and Eve was not there. Mm. So because Moses was not there, it gives me permission to ask questions, not of the story, but of how all of this works as I am experiencing it. How does life work as I am experiencing it? How is all of this created as I am experiencing it? What is my purpose as I am experiencing it? How are people born as I am experiencing it? What is going on with space as I am experiencing it? What is going on with nature as I am experiencing it? I, my, my you know, hypothesis is maybe Moses was somewhere one day and asked God, what is all of this really about? And then he writes this story. But what we don't see in the most popular book sold, the one that is in the bench on the back of your uh, pew mm -hmm. is, is the King James Version. And what you don't see in that version is Adam and Eve telling their story. Mm -hmm. You don't see in that version uh, Cain and Abel telling their own story. Mm -hmm. And in the day of narrative ownership, I want to tell my own story. I want to get ahead of it and own my story. We are so quick to read and study and preach and orate on someone else's story. So here you are orating on a story that someone else orated on. <laughs> Moses writes the story of someone else and you preaching the story that Moses wrote about somebody else. <laughs> How far can I go? Keep you going. Go no further than that. <laughs> Keep going on that. No. <laughs> you, you know, you have, there's, this, there's this quote that, and I write about this too, and I, I can't remember all of it, but it, it talks about some of the things you should be aware of when you're reading a story. And one of them is who was there or who's not there. And so I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading this, this book from Genesis chapter one to the last chapter and the person will reading Genesis chapter one, two and three. 
where the world is formed and it's without void and darkness covered the face of the deep and God looked at it and said let there be light and there was and he said let's create man in his image and his likeness and the likeness of men he created them both male and female and then he said um it's not good for man to be alone and he put him to sleep and then he took from the the the, the man's rib and made a woman and when the way woke up there was a there was a man and there was a woman and then they had it and all, he's telling somebody else's story He's not there. He's not there witnessing any of this. Do you know what you hit on is us as people, we think in a realm of logic. And in a church setting, when you speak in logic, people are very oppositional and get very angry like you're speaking against fact. But mm -hmm. if we're made in his image, that means he has a sense of humor. He has curiosity. He has questions. So when you ask very logical questions, you're met with opposition that turns you off to whatever location that you're at, whether it's a church, whether it's online, whatever have you, if you're not open to answer these questions, because we all interpret the Bible different ways. We can read the same verse and everybody get a different perspective. Why won't we talk about things like that? Because I'm big on you want there. How can you tell me what happened? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. <clears throat> So, you know what, that, that makes a lot of sense. So I want to um, throw this out here, this uh, from Miss Lily Wilson. She says, is that uh, not true of any oral tradition that gets passed down? All right. That is how history works. All right. It's the same as us not experiencing our history, i.e. slavery, but still feeling the effects. It creates a backdrop that you explore for yourself. Oh, and see how you are impacted. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, or I want to add to it or to see if you're impacted at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's funny you say that because there's times when individuals take on. Yes. Right. They take on the woes, if you will, of someone else. And it didn't have anything to do with you because it wasn't yours to do. Damn it. Well, so so one of my favorite one of my favorite examples of that is that uh, David is the author, if you will, of the book of Psalm. And just in case someone is listening that um, that doesn't know who that is, you know, David fought the giant Goliath and, you know, uh, slingshot hit him in the head, killed the giant. This that's the story. Uh, David uh, was a cheater and he. Um, uh, took somebody's wife and just a lot of things. Um, so if any of those stories sound familiar, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, David was the shepherd. He uh, was a shepherd of sheep and was then anointed king, even as a young man and had to go through the process. He didn't just because he was anointed king as a young man didn't mean that he took the throne, but he was anointed to be a future king. And so all of those things, well, David is known to have said, um, I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And so uh, pastors all over the country and, you know, all over the world are saying, we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You know, we hold our ear, oh, Lord, born in sin. But the, the verse says, I was born in sin. He's telling his own story. So, so Christianity has built an entire religion on selling sin using that verse. But he's speaking for himself. He didn't say we, he said he. So that, 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 that's permission for me to then ask questions about my own birth about my own life, about where I come from, where, I, where I'm where i going, my existence and my trying to figure out my existence is not predicated on what he said about his life. Hmm. But the whole system is built on, David said he was born in sin, not we. I think mm -hmm. some of these verses are used to manipulate the minds of the person that's listening. Earlier, you, you, you spoke about you were trying to find out who you were as a person. And right. just like the religion, churches or organizations, people flock to things that feel part of something. And mm -hmm. sometimes when they get part of that organization or that thing they were looking for, 
They don't ask questions because they have that fulfillment. Right. But they don't they still don't know who they are. They're adopting somebody else's belief. And right. I think a lot of people are caught up in religion that way. I was I was a lot of people. A lot of people was me. As so, I mentioned earlier, the only difference is for me, my personal story is that I had a chance to leave it. I left and went to another country, but I was those people. I was that person um, that wanted to be a part of something. So when I, when I, when this thing came out of my spirit, um, this title, if you will, and this prayer, this sentiment, I already knew when I said yes to writing it, when I surrendered to the idea, I already, let me say it this way. You were going to say no to a lot of stuff. <laughs> when I, well, I, when I surrendered to the idea, I also surrendered to the thought of losing friends. Mm -hmm. I also surrendered to the idea of the, uh, or the thought of losing family members. I knew for sure, being the oldest of four girls, I knew that for sure my sisters weren't going anywhere. But anybody else, you name them. You can name a, a, a certain role in the family. I would say, yep, mm -hmm. it, this person, mentor, mama, daddy, uh, aunties, uncles. I come from lines, of generations of, of Christian clergy. And I knew when I said I surrendered to, to the idea of this book, I surrendered to, to losing relationships. Mm -hmm. Damn. Go ahead, Larry. And you, and you know what? This is a good another good transition because I wanted to talk about I am a person. I'm a firm believer of everything happens for a reason. And here's where I'm going with this. When I left St. Louis, Missouri to join the Air Force in 2007, my perspective prior to that was all St. Louis. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything outside of it. When I left and came back 10 years later, I've grown so much that I've looked at it. And it's like, wow. If I if I'd have stayed here, I probably wouldn't have grown to the level I am today. And I'd ask you that same question. Do you think that it was by chance, by faith of God, that you went to China and you were sort of handicapped and taken away from your traditional things that you were used to doing in the Western uh, part of the country? And now they're like, yeah, you can't do some of that stuff. And it really awakened that part of the brain that you probably never even thought about to get you to where you at and to get to, to write this book and just to transition your whole, it seemed like your whole life changed right after you literally, came, left change. Literally, so my whole life changed. Yeah. Literally, I was, again, uh, pursuing the collar. I, I, when I came to Columbus, Georgia, where I reside now, I was at least um, licensed. I graduated here with a degree in biblical studies. I plan to be a traditional uh, church leader, if not pastor, you know, um, and going to China interrupted all of that. Yeah. And um, I am so glad I, I did not know there was this kind of thriving on you know, one of the things I say is that if you put, you know, uh, a stethoscope to um, to diagnose my spiritual life, you would hear thriving um, because of the level of curiosity um, I seek to to uh, engage in. And so it, it, I go to China and my curiosity, as I, I like to say, inhaled um, because it wasn't awake before I left. And when I got back to the States, it exhaled. So I've gone from being in church every time the door opened to hiking, swimming, cycling, uh, um, uh, shooting bows and arrows, uh, uh, trying to figure out how to, to, to shoot a gun. I'm anything I can learn. I've gone to a Jewish synagogue. I have hung out at the mosque. Um, I'm hanging out with the Unitarian Universalist hanging out with a, uh, a Buddhist nun. I mean, just wherever I don't know any, I'm not uh, informed enough. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to learn people. How can I love God and love people and not know people? There it is. 
I, that's the pathway of not favorite. judging people. Dang it. You see, okay, go ahead. I want you to get your thought. Go ahead. That That's it. And so I have to put myself in the way of all kinds of different people. When I came back from China, my I looked for an apartment um, in a, in a, a community small enough that I could actually learn and know my neighbors. The, the thing about loving God and loving people is, is I couldn't be a Christian and do that. How do I love people and be a Christian too? You can't do it. I, for, I know I can't it, because, because for me, a lot, what comes with Christianity is converting. That's a part of the assignment. That's a part of accepting the title is converting. Well, then I was, then I would be building relationships based on the opportunity to convert. That to me is loving with an agenda, which is actually not love. Yep. That's conditional. Right. So how do I love people and be a Christian? So the best way to love people is just not be a Christian. <laughs> you know what? So listen, before you go into it, Jesus, Jesus, you heard it. Listen, so here it is. All right. Uh, so here's a question or a statement. Religious experiences hurt relationships with God. True relationships with God transforms us. Shout out. That's dope. Sharita says, perhaps your travel was created. Uh, was to create your ultimate testimony and perhaps it will propel to do God's work in the less quote unquote religious way, but just serving God. And I do agree with that. What are your thoughts about that? Like, do you feel as though you are doing more of God's work without a dogma attached to it? What are your thoughts about that? I feel like I'm I am being more of who I am. There we go. There's there's a lot of and we don't mean any harm. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, of jargon. Um, and I hate to use that word because I know there's no harm in it. But there's a lot of jargon that comes with, again, Western Christianity, but and also black Christianity. I have questions about serving God. The words itself. I don't know that God asked me to serve him. Y'all come back on this screen. <laughs> no, I don't think you want to see my face. <laughs> you got so, it. I was out. The, the verse says, love God and love your neighbor. And so uh, I, we've been called, I think, to serve each other. You know, and so. It, m what I am doing is becoming the best version of the expression of God's love as best as possible. So that mm -hmm. when I am encountered, people experience love. That's it. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to, to serve God. I'm trying to express God. So real quick, for those of y'all that uh, are, are interested in this book, Lord, Lord, <laughs> don't want to die a Christian. We're going to take some time and uh, introduce this um, this giveaway. If you haven't done so already, make sure you put in hashtag lions, hashtag lions, okay? And just as a reminder for those of you that don't know how to spell it, here it is, hashtag L-I-O-N-S. Can you dig it? Okay, we're getting ready to do this. Uh, getting ready to do this giveaway. You ready? Here, Betty, let me do some background music. Okay. Wait, wait, I can't do that because we might get shut off. All right, let me... <laughs> Lord, okay. Yeah, I know. I was getting ready to boom. Let's see who we got. Who we got. There you go. Look, it was rigged, y'all. He did it. He got on <laughs> But no, so I'll make sure I get that book out uh out for him. But ladies and gentlemen, so 
Big uh, Larry, man, what you what you think, man, for your final word, brother? Hey, hey final word, man, Miss Chandrika. Thank you yes. for taking your time to come out and, and just be open and transparent with us. I know this is like one of those subjects that's touchy, right? And I think we we did we served a purpose today. It's not so much as we're trying to t- challenge your thinking or anything like that. It's just saying if you have questions express those questions there's okay. material out there that can kind of help guide you along those ways because you're not the only one with them but you don't always have to follow the status quo and the tradition yes there's tradition there's nothing wrong with it but there's also nothing wrong with challenging with questions about why we do certain things and what was said and what it just really mean as time changes you know it's not the 1920s it's not the 1970s we're in 2022 our experiences are all different and there's nothing wrong with that Overall, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you, and you've been, <laughs> I'm telling you, I've had a good time today. Thanks. <laughs> right on. Go ahead. Uh, oh, her, uh, I was going to say her. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's that Jesus juice over there. I see you, boy. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, <laughs> ma'am, I, I want to thank you for your strength and your courage because you're able to walk in your purpose and who you're supposed to be, and it costs you some relationships, but just know that it's for a reason. And sometimes it Things are happening for us and lift us where we need to be. So I commend you on that. Keep doing what you're doing because you're going to help a lot of people with this approach. A lot of people, traditionally, it does not connect with people that are curious about religion because of the way that it's communicated. So I can say I appreciate you for your your style, I'm going to say. And I'm not going to say transparency for keeping it real because you got to keep it 100 when you talk about religion or else you're going to lose your audience. So thank you for doing that. I look forward to seeing you back on the show again so we get into this book a little bit more because we didn't talk about it like I wanted to. So I look let's forward to it. you coming back for part two to let's get it in. Let's but thank it. you again for coming on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. And so what I would like to do, ma'am, is give you an opportunity to speak to the audience Anything that you would like them to know about you as an individual, you got a minute to do it. Go ahead. Floor is yours. Listen, I, I'm I'm growing. I am and more so growing out of to be revealed to myself. Um, I am stripping, if you will, away the fig leaves of religion. Um, I, I don't know if or I don't know if I agree with the young lady who who just uh, posed the the her sentiment about um, genuine Christianity. Um, I don't I don't know if there's a such thing. Um, what I do know is that for me, however, I experienced Christianity. Um, it was a place to hide. Um, it kept me from knowing me. Um, and I believe um, if I'm going to be the light of the world, um, as Jesus talks about, then I have to know what that light is. I have to know what it's made of. I have to know how it is to shine. And so um, my encouragement is to 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 everyone is to find um, or seek you seek for your authentic self. What is your experience of God? Um, they had their experiences of God. And, and so what is yours? And, and please know, um, you know, I don't know. I've never heard where Jesus intended to start uh, a religion or a movement called Christianity. But he did intend for us to love each other. And so that's all I'm trying to be. And if Christianity keeps me from doing that, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yes, yes. And I have to find a sound for that, too. Right. To drop the mic. It it might sound crazy, but y'all can dig it. So, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed this show. Shout out to y'all for sticking around and getting this in. Don't get me wrong. I do understand that there's some things that people may not understand, may not like, but it is so uh, important for us to talk to each other. That's right. You know what I mean? All we have to do is talk to each other and be willing to say, hey, I have my thoughts and I have my beliefs, but I am curious to hear yours because ultimately in my mind, God is in all of us. It's just our, not necessarily perception of him, but our awareness of where he is in our lives, right? And then so when individuals are able to share that love, that's a representation of God that's right next to you. So I encourage you to go out there, be a great neighbor. You dig what I'm saying? And stop acting funny style, right? And judging folks. And y'all make sure y'all have a great, 
great, great week. And we'll see y'all soon. Right on? Right on. Let's go.